Hello, you're watching V News Bulletin. I'm Bongo from Hanoi, and now the headlines as usual. President resists Cambodian armed forces delegation. Project on digital population data reviewed. And later on, 55 years of ASEAN, one vision, one identity, one community. A delegation of the Royal Cambodian Armed Forces led by Lieutenant General Hun Manet is making an official visit to Vietnam. On August 9th, President Nguyen Xuân Phúc hosted a reception for the delegation. Welcoming Cambodian guests, President Phúc said he believed that the success of their visit would make an important contribution to promoting traditional relations and friendship between two countries. Lieutenant General Hun Manet briefed the host about results of his talks with leaders of the Vietnamese Ministry of National Defense, where the two sides agreed to strengthen comprehensive coordination in all fields, preserve and promote the traditional and friendly cooperation between two armies and peoples. Emphasizing the importance of military and defense cooperation, one of the important pillars in the relationship between Vietnam and Cambodia, President Phu expressed his hope that cooperation between two defense ministries would grow stronger, both bilaterally and multilaterally, with a variety of contents and practical and effective activities. The project on digital population data, or project number six, has been implemented for six months. On August 9th, a national virtual conference was held to review the implementation. During the conference, Prime Minister Ching, who is also head of the National Steering Committee on Digital Transformation, stressed that the difficult and far-reaching work requires great concentration, determination, and efforts coupled with drastic actions. As heard at the function, the government has so far held 16 meetings, issued one decree, one dispatch, and seven notifications, with four resolutions of its regular meetings involving directions on the project. As per project number six, within this year, the old and new versions of citizens' IDs will be integrated, enabling the e-identification of all citizens. In the 2023 to 2025 period, e-identification and e-authentication are expected to be applied on all people conducting administrative procedures at one-stop shop office at all levels. The 14th session of the National Assembly Standing Committee opened on August 9th under the chair of Chairman Phương Đình Huệ. In his opening remarks, Chairman Hui said that the session will last for two days and a half, during which the committee will look into a rough report on the outcomes of the thematic supervision of policies and laws on trade practice and anti-Westernness for 2016 to 2021. Lawmakers will offer opinions on social economic issues regarding the middle-term public investment plan for the 2021 to 2025 period and the government's proposal for policies aimed at employers and employees affected by COVID-19. It will devote the whole days of August 10 for a Q&A session with a focus on matters under the chart of the Ministry of Public Security and the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism. Deputy Prime Ministers, Ministers and Heads of Ministerial Level Agencies will be responding to the questions. The Association of Southeast Asian Nations was established on August 8, 1967, initiating a process of extensive integration for the sake of peace, stability and development in Southeast Asia and the region. Nowadays, the bloc is one of the most important, reputable and successful regional organizations in the world and the common home of 650 million people in 10 Southeast Asia countries. After 55 years of growth, ASEAN holds a central role in many important dialogue, cooperation and connectivity processes in the region. The ASEAN Way, based on the basic principles of the international law, solidarity, consensus and non-interference in internal affairs, is always preserved, fostered and promoted and has created value and identity for ASEAN. ASEAN has wisely taken advantage of fierce competition between powers through its rational assess. 
The bloke also expresses his neutral stance and hopes that countries will promote healthy competition to build regions of peace, stability and prosperity. It is the ASEAN way that has helped ASEAN and its member countries over comfortable and periods locally and around the world. At the same time, in successfully overcoming the challenges and difficulties, ASEAN becomes more mature with an enhanced spirit of solidarity and unity. For example, Cambodia... Very well. For example, Cambodia and, uh, and Vietnam, Cambodia and Laos, and Cambodia and, and the Thailand, so we are very well uh, co cooperated. If there is anything happen because of the COVID-19, we help each other financially and also medical assistance. Being faithful to its purpose and operating principles, ASEAN has played an important role in promoting dialogue, cooperation and confidence building among countries both in and outside the region. ASEAN is able to create a playground for all countries. Heavy waste in economic and military power have engaged in ASEAN-led mechanisms to discuss how to dialogue and cooperate for further development. After 55 years of construction and development, ASEAN can be proud of being a model of successful regional integration. Its achievements has provided a solid foundation for ASEAN to strive to fulfill the ASEAN Community Vision 2025 and build the ASEAN Community Vision post-2025 to further strengthen the unity, resilience and responsiveness of the ASEAN Community. Vietnam GDP growth is forecast to expand 7.5% this year and 6.7% next year with resilient manufacturing and a robust rebound in services serving as the driving forces for economic recovery. According to the latest economic update by the World Bank for Vietnam, the country's economy expanded 5.2% in quarter 4 of last year and respectively 5.1% and 7.7% in quarter 1 and quarter 2 of this year. Inflation is projected to average 3.8% over the year. The biannual report lays out a set of policy recommendations that could help mitigate the impact of these risks and make the economy more resilient going forward. Titled Taking stock, educate to grow, the addition underlies transforming the higher education system as a key to boosting the country's productivity and achieving its development goals in the context where the country re-emerges from the pandemic and into a challenging global environment. Focusing on tertiary and higher education, the Bank's report recommends reforming the education system to improve quality and access and thus provide the necessary skills to the population. Special farm produce from around Vietnam is now on the shelves of supermarkets in Ho Chi Minh City. The One Commune One Product program aims to boost the sale of Vietnamese agricultural products in the domestic market. A variety of high-quality organic products from the north to the south with clear traceability are being sold at supermarkets in the southern metropolis. The creation of specific sales spaces enables local consumers to buy the best products at reasonable prices. It also helps promote domestic production and enables local farmers to build their brands. With the move, businesses, cooperatives and retail distributors are expected to increase the sale of CLP products, which will help stabilize markets for farmers. The Ministry of Transport has approved an investment worth over $47 million for subproject to upgrade the Nha Trang Saigon Railway Section, which is part of the project to renovate and upgrade the Hanoi Ho Chi Minh City Railway route in the 2021 to 2025 period. The subproject aims to ensure traffic safety, improve the quality of railway infrastructure, and transport capacity of both passengers and goods thus effectively exploiting the existing infrastructure along the Nha Trang Saigon route. It will focus on upgrading, degrading bridges and renovating, repairing and building a number of passenger and cargo stations. The Ministry of Transport has required its Vietnam Railway Project Management Board and relevant units to fully carry out surveys on various aspects and review and balance capital sources to ensure investment efficiencies. 
The Vietnam National Youth City Hanoi ranked 758th in the latest web metrics ranking of world youth cities, jumping 186 places from the previous list released in January. With a new position, Vietnam National University is 183rd in Asia and 14 in Southeast Asia. According to the rankings issued by the Cybermetric Lab of the Spanish National Research Council on August 7, the Web Metrics List, issued twice a year, assesses the digitalization capacity and impact of higher education institutions' academic resources based on the volume of the website content, the visibility and impact of their website publications, the openness of academic resources and Google Scholar. To the Vietnam National University, the jump from 1,316th position in the January rankings to the 656th in terms of visibility indicates the broadened scope of influence of its online resources and website on not only the academic community of Vietnam and the world, but also the society. Vietnam Airlines flight VN384 on its way from Hanoi to Handana, Japan on August 8th returned to the departing airport after one hour and 45 minutes to provide urgent care for a Japanese boy who had a health problem. The 10-year-old boy among the 145 passengers on board suffered a nosebleed. The flight attendant team immediately provided emergency assistance to him on the plane. However, due to the passengers' non-stop bleeding, the crew decided to return the plane to Noi International Airport to seek medical support. The passenger, who was with his mother and sister, was then brought to a hospital in Hanoi. His condition has become stable. Chief Flight Attendant Duan Thi Kim Thơ underlined that for Vietnam Airlines, in all cases, the safety of passengers is always the top priority. Australian magazine Traveller has listed Vietnam among the eight best places to go in Asia for holiday. It recommended from December to March when the weather is pleasant as the ideal time to visit the long, sandy beaches of Vietnam. It particularly recommended Quy Nhơn, the beach resort town on the south central coast. Long as their domestic destination, beautiful beach flanked Quy Nhơn has a quite hipster mojo and is tipped as the next Da Nang. The magazine also advised tourists to explore Ninh Bình, famous for better boat tours through limestone cars and padded rice fields. In the central highlands, Da Lạt, a summer retreat with the French during the colonial period, is well known for adventurous sports such as trekking, mountain biking, and rafting, is said. A lesser known destination in the northwest not to be missed is Điện Biên Phủ, which used to be a major battlefield during the war, is said. The province is developing ecotourism and offering indigenous village homestays amid stunning forested landscapes and home culture. Other destinations on the list are Thailand, India, the Republic of Korea, Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Philippines. The Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism has issued a decision to add 10 additional national intangible cultural heritage. The newly recognized National Intangible Cultural Heritage include brocade weaving of the Mundong people in Bing Phu Province, Chu Bao Festival in Bing Ding Province, Ba Chiu Temple Festival in Thanh Hoa Province, and decorative art and costumes of the Mong Hoa people in Tuyen Quang Province, and tofu making crafts in Vinh Long Province. The intangible cultural heritage elements have been divided into four categories of traditional handicrafts, traditional festivals, social practices and beliefs, and for law knowledge. The ministry has assigned the authority that all levels in localities where intangible cultural heritage are located to be responsible for the management of the heritage within the scope of their duties and in accordance with the law and regulations on cultural heritage.